most of you probably own this game, there's a reason you should still keep it installed. Yes, GTR 2 features all the quirks of ISI motor-based games, but it was the best ISI motor-based game. A lot of you younger guys watching this probably got into sim racing through Assetto Corsa. It was the first big racing sim that you really sat down and tried to learn how to play and mess around with and start installing mods into. GTR 2 was that game for me. This game came out in 2006 when I was in middle school and it was an important game for me as a sim racer because it was the first game I played that actually drove like a car. At this point in the history of the sim racing industry, there were four games on top of the industry that everyone kind of acknowledged were the best racing sims to ever be released. Those were NASCAR Racing 2003 Season and Grand Prix Legends by Papyrus, F1 Challenge 99-02 by Image Space Incorporated, and then Richard Burns Rally by SCI and Warthog. You're probably wondering what those four games had in common. They were unnecessarily difficult to drive. If you got out the car in something like NASCAR 03 or F1 Challenge, you would violently spin into the concrete barrier. Because sim racing as an industry was so new at the time and we didn't have the level of pro driver involvement that we do today, obviously, a lot of people just kind of smiled and nodded at each other and said, yep, this is realistic, I guess, and we just have to figure out how to drive it. As a teenager playing racing sims in the early 2000s, and yes, I had pretty much all of them, the internet was a wild west and what you couldn't buy in stores you could easily obtain through LimeWire or Kaza. Playing most of them was completely impractical. It was so easy to overload the tires in those games that you would just wreck and have no idea why, and you couldn't go on YouTube for sim racing lessons because YouTube didn't exist. So in a lot of racing sims you were left just crawling around the track and hoping you didn't die, which is not a very engrossing experience if you're a teenager with a bit more free time and wanting to get into these games. GTR 2 was a big deal in sim racing because it fixed that. This is most likely an incorrect explanation, but as most racing sims went the route of making the rear tires really easy to overload and have these really peaky, unforgiving slip angles, GTR 2 by comparison gave the rear tires a lot of grip so the car always felt planted, but made the front tires really easy to overload. So from a driver's standpoint, what this ends up doing is, instead of just losing the rear end in medium to low speed corners, the car just mildly understeers and you simply reduce your speed a bit and carry on with your day. Which one sounds more like how a real race car behaves? Backing it into the wall in every third corner because the rear end just suddenly goes like you've hit black ice? Or fighting over tents on the track and just trying to have a better braking technique than the car ahead of you? As a teenager learning what racing sims were basically for the first time, yes I played oval stuff growing up but I count NASCAR sims as their own kind of separate thing. This is the game where it all clicked for me in that road racing wasn't this terrifying abstract concept where just making it through a corner was a good day. And obviously as time would progress, this became the Norman racing sims and now we have games like Assetto Corsa and Race Room and Project Cars that all drive like this. When it comes to licensed major releases, GTR was the first one. And my experience probably echoes a lot of people's experiences with this game back when it was brand new. This is where things clicked for a lot of people. And as a result, word of mouth spread and the game's popularity obviously just took off. What's wild about playing this now 17 years later in 2022 with a bunch of seasons of real world racing under my belt, GTR 2 drives even better than we remember it driving. Games like Assetto Corsa kind of feel like you're driving in sludge. Here the tires actually feel like tacky. And the car also has noticeable weight to it, both under load and just driving in a straight line, that games like AC don't really replicate. Even race room, the cars feel a bit too floaty compared to what you experience in GTR. This doesn't mean those are bad handling games, it just means that GTR 2 does it better. A spec sheet I was able to find through Google searches says the Maserati MC12 GT1, which I'm driving here, clocks in at, I believe, 2,400 pounds, and in this game, it feels like a 2,400 pound thing being pressed into the ground. Braking is one area the sim does better than anything else as well. Uh, you'll notice when I go into a heavy braking zone, we're coming up to turn two here, the nose actually starts chattering, and there's a bit of wheel hop that you can notice through the vibrations in the cockpit. It makes braking really intuitive, which is something I don't experience in other racing sims, especially stuff like Assetto Corsa, where you're really relying on ABS and modern GT3 cars as a crutch. Here, you can notice when you've overdone it, you've got a bit of wheel hop going, and you naturally want to ease off the brake pedal to alleviate the hopping. This is one of the few games I can hop into, period, with without any practice or getting acquainted with, you know, the quirks of each individual sim, and just immediately be on it and getting the tires warm for a qualifying lap. Just how nuanced and lively the car is under braking, you can immediately find the correct threshold for every corner. 
which is how a real car works. It's not vague, it's very intuitive and interactive. GTR 2, GTR Evo, and even GT Legends all do this really well. And again, it results in a game that's just really natural to drive. Now, as I've mentioned before, this game does have the typical ISI motor quirks that you've probably grown accustomed to over the years. Just be prepared for that, and if it really bothers you, there are massive community patches released for this game, although tracking them down nowadays is a bit hard because the site they were hosted on, nogripracing.com, went under. So pay attention to the comments. People are going to point them out in the comments. Just Google the names and you'll find alternative download links for them. Me, personally, I'm running the stock Steam build with the version 1.1 EXE patch. There are some benefits to installing that particular patch over the Steam build. You'll know them when you see them. But as you can see outside my front windshield, stock GTR2 in a 25-minute race against the AI is a completely viable sim racing product even in 2022. Especially because these cars were from an awesome period of sports car racing. Modern GT3 cars right now put out around 500 horsepower and they're designed to be driven with varying levels of ABS and traction control enabled. These cars I looked up online are only about half a second quicker around Hockenheim than modern GT3 cars, but they get there in a very different way. There's no ABS, there's no traction control, and they put out anywhere from 600 to 650 horsepower. There's a lot more car than there is in modern GT3, but because the handling model was done absolutely perfectly, they're manageable and it's rewarding to get it right as opposed to just immensely frustrating. This game can't be more than $8 on Steam right now. It's worth, if you've never tried it before, cruising around in it for an afternoon. This is more or less where the philosophy behind a modern sim racer's handling model started. And if your buddies are looking to get into sim racing for cheap, this is honestly where you should start them. Don't make them suffer in iRacing.